Have you ever stopped and wondered how are we going to truly repair the social order? To repair all the hatreds. It's a long list of social disorders. All the hatreds, all the civil unrest, all of the rights, all of the disturbances, all of the civil disorders and bring it to a place where it needs to be, where it truly needs to be, where there is cooperation, unity, peace, and prosperity. Well, first of all, when we start working on this problem, we have to gain a, a vision of what can happen and what can take place. Uh, what all can be brought into place that will tend to bring people into a unity that will head them in the right direction to get along with one another, to cause order. Uh, and what we have to do in that event is look to uh, God for a, to give us and ask God to give us a vision, a real vision of what should take place and how he can help us to assure that that takes place properly and with benefit to all people. Yeah, we have to realize that the vision has to be so great that only God is going to be able to come up with that kind of vision in the first place. And so when we begin to look at this, we may not be able to get the full vision at first of exactly how it's going to work. You know, it may seem like, uh, it may seem even unworkable. You know, sometimes things seem unworkable, but really they're not. It's always within God's view and his vantage point to begin to see exactly how everything will work. All citizens will have the things that they need. All citizens will re be repaired uh, to the point where their lives will prosper and they will enjoy equal benefits with everyone else. Uh, with uh, uh, even the, you know, the most well prepared and well stacked and saved and, and, uh, put up and, and built up order of society. So we need to think now, there is a way. In other words, see that there is a way because God can give us a greater vision than we have right now. So we cannot, we should not just say, okay, I don't have the full vision, so I'm not going to work on anything. You know, this is one of the things I've had been going through is that in the past, over the past years, I said, well, there's these, these things that need uh, this repair of the social order. You know, this, like uh, Reverend Barber says, uh, re calls it the repair of the breach. And let's see. Well, there's a lot of others. I'm not going to go into them all that say that it has to be repaired. First one way or the other, they, they come up with their visions. And their visions... Sometimes the visions are mesh, and sometimes the visions go in a few different directions. But we can we can bring all these visions together, and we can put them down under God as a purview, and ask Him, "How are we going to bring all these visions together where it doesn't appear so difficult?" You know. Like, this is one of the things that the Congress and the government's going through now, is that those, these things that need to be done to repair what Reverend Barber calls the breach and what others call, some, some of them call uh, an unfixable breach that needs to be further breached to the advantage of the people that are being taken advantage of, you know, and things like that, you know, they, and, uh, and uh, other people say, yeah, it can be, but it's going to really be a major undertaking, and then so Congress gets together and they say, well, this is such a difficult thing, you know, uh, and uh, 
we're going to have to have help in understanding this. You know, we're going to have to get uh, groups together and uh, study all this out. And uh, and then when they begin to study it all out, well, what happens is it becomes more and more difficult to them. And, you know, everything that they come up with seems to be an unresolvable conflict, uh, an un, uh, undoable situation, something that. Even the things which we would really love to see happen just seem to be almost, they're almost insurmountable hurdles in the way of getting it done. And so then they, they may give up a while, but then they'll come back again and keep keep trying. And so, but what is missing, you see, what we need to, need to see that what is missing is that spirit of transcendence, that transcendent mind that can look over the whole thing and see how all the problems over here, this city, that city, this this state, that state, and, you know, even in the world, the other countries, and everything, how it all, uh, all these problems are different, but they're really the same. And we can see how that if we work all those problems together, we can come up with a solution that will meet everything, you know, and God can give us that, you know, just like as if we had, uh, I often visualize, you know, like a, a thousand piece puzzle. And we've worked for years, uh, well, on a puzzle, maybe hopefully not that long, but maybe for weeks on getting it all, to, all, to, all of that, all thousand pieces up to, you know, all up to the last five or six pieces. You know, we've got 9,000, uh, 995 pieces. Or, you know, more if it's a larger puzzle. We've got 995 out of a thousand pieces there. And we got five left somewhere that have somehow, you know, we, we just can't figure out how to get them in there, you know, or they, we've lost them or whatever it is. Maybe you have to draw some new ones. But then we're down to the last five. But we just can't get the last five to make the vision work. Well, that's where... I'm talking about in my example. We go to God and ask, Lord, how do we put those last five pieces into place that seem to just keep bugging us and keep, keep and keep us from working out the final details and working out the final plan? And so you'll be amazed how he can lift your vantage point up to where you can see things you never saw before. You know, you'll... You'll be, you, maybe you, you'll stand up and look around and you'll see them, the five pieces down there. Or maybe you'll just see all of a sudden where those five pieces go. And this can happen the same way in, the, in repairing the social order. You know, whether, whether you want to consider it repairing the order or just putting together a better social order. Uh, or adding to the social order. It'd probably be more like what we need to do is add to the the uh, social order that we uh, add to the social order so that it includes more people, so more people benefit from it. I think that would be the correct way to look at it. Uh, uh, build it, add to our social order so that it will include more people and more people will benefit from it. Now, but the whole thing is I'm trying to, to express here is we we need to get a a divine vision. You know, we need to spend some time in prayer about this. You know, what is wrong in the United States? We know, everyone knows, I don't care what words you are, uh, uh, Jewish, Christian, uh, Muslim, uh, uh, Orthodox, unorthodox, or atheist, or, or halfway atheist, or whatever whatever you are, agnostic, uh, you, you, everyone knows there's, there's, a, there's a lot of problems, and there's a lot of things that are wrong in the United States. A lot of things are wrong, and a lot of things need to be corrected. And every one of them, perhaps they have a certain amount of the vision uh, of what needs to happen. But maybe they need to, uh, they don't have the, the entire vision. But what they, we need to all do is get together under God and ask God, all of us will ask God, you know, to give us the vision, the real vision. Then we come together and compare that vision that God has given us, you know, and and uh, let that all work in our mind. Let that ferment in, in, in our mind, well, not too long because we, the problems are dire. And so, but if we will just let these solutions 
begin to come forth from people of all various types, all different religions, creeds, and colors, you know, but all of these different visions of what the country needs to be like in the future and how we need to solve these problems, there can be a beautiful place in the sun for every single individual of whatever race, creed, or color. And we can derive it. We can derive those solutions. This is the whole thing, the big problem <coughs> that stands in the way. The big problem that's the spoke in the wheel is that too many people believe that it's beyond repair, that it's beyond, that the vision is too great for us to ever figure out how we're going to do this. You know, it's going to, some people say, well, it's going to cost too much. It'll, you know, bankrupt the country. Other people will say, well, uh, a certain number of group of people, groups of people will not want that solution. And so no use of bringing it up because they wouldn't accept it. Uh, you know, uh, others would say, well, it, it, you know, the solution we come up with is not large enough. Uh, not enough money is being spent, you know, and all there's all these different things that come up. But when God gets a hold of it, he'll give us a vision that will solve all of that in our mind. Everybody will understand that this is the only way that it can go. This is the only way. This is the only real solution. And this is the good, the best solution. And this is the solution that is workable. And this is a solution that will surprise us as to how really easy it was all the time, but we just were not willing to get down and look at it closely and pray about it and get God to give us ideas and get God to work with us to solve this, these different problems. All this, you know, like I say, whether it's the civil unrest, whether it's a civil disorder, whether it's the hatred, the prejudices, the racial problems, the disagreements among groups and uh, of religions and and creeds and colors and all these different uh, uh, different uh, types of uh, disunity that God can unify all that because God can draw upon the fact that every one of us have a divine soul which is really can think about God and can receive ideas from God and can work with God every one of us no matter what race creed color or religion can all work with God when God begins to work in our in our hearts and lives, and we begin to ask God for ideas, He can work in every one of us. There's not one single person in the United States that God can't work with and, and cause them to be drawn toward a common goal, that can be drawn toward a common solution that will work for everybody and that will make everybody happy, you know, other than just those few people that are going to determine not to be happy. You know, there's, there's some unfortunate individuals that's not going to be happy with anything because they've got their hatred that they're going to hold on to but that's you know a small a small amount which you know i'll go into some of that later but the the overwhelming majority of the people will accept a unity and a solution that is that comes from our seeking god and from god giving us a higher vision than we've seen before they will look at that and they say that's a higher vision than we've seen before that is a that is a uh, vision that represents the real love and the real joy of the lord that's a, a vision that, re, re, that represents a real uh god-given solution a real divine idea you know something later on we'll talk about the power of a real idea or the power of a divine idea or just the power of a good idea and how much power he's going to god will give us good ideas that everyone will accept and then we can look up and we can say okay this that's the idea we all have been looking for you know and then we'll he will even bring in those few stragglers that you know or just don't want to accept uh, anything well they'll, they'll finally come along too and so we will have the solution and so uh i'm going to have to uh Pray about this, and we'll continue to pray, and I'll pray for everyone that's seeking the solution, and we will work this all out in the name of our blessed Holy Lord Jesus, uh, Lord Jesus Christ.